I wanted to talk about difficult conversations. I get a lot of questions from people about how to have a difficult conversation, what are some tips, techniques, what do we do with difficult conversations? And I wanna back up just a bit and ask you, what is it that makes the conversation difficult before you've even had it? What's happening for you already before you even engage with the other person that alerts you or that tells you or that you decide, oh, this is gonna be a difficult conversation. So I'd like to unpack that first. What is it that makes something difficult? It's our worry or our fear about it. So let's look at a couple things. Number one, I'm afraid to have the conversation because I don't know if I'll do it well. It's common, common fear. Number two, I'm afraid to have the conversation because I'm not sure how the other person is going to respond. Do we ever know though? I mean, not usually. We don't usually know how someone else is gonna respond. If we're concerned about the conversation, I guarantee you we're imagining it's not gonna go well already. Number three, it's difficult because I will put myself at risk for being rejected, which is connected to number four, I have to risk being known. There's something that exposes me in the conversation that makes it seem difficult or feel difficult. So let's look at what happens when we avoid the conversation that needs to be had because we've decided in advance that it's gonna be difficult. It doesn't go away. It doesn't go anywhere. As a matter of fact, often what happens is the conversation itself still gets imparted or communicated to the other person through either our actions, our inaction, our attitude, or our straight out avoidance. And if you've noticed yourself, guess what other people do? In the absence of data, we typically fill in the blanks with worst case scenario. So sometimes by avoiding what we perceive to be a potentially difficult conversation, we've left room for the other person to imagine a way worse case scenario than the one that's actually playing out for us. I've often asked myself when I'm in those conversations with myself, why am I making up that this will be difficult? What is the purpose of this story or this narrative I'm in that, oh no, it's gonna be difficult? And what I found for myself is often, often, it is really just a way to validate my cowardice. I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna take the risk. And me exaggerating in my mind how hard it's gonna be, or oh my goodness, I might get my feelings hurt, they might get their feelings hurt, we may never recover from this conversation, is simply a way to avoid. It's simply a way for me to avoid the risk that relationship requires. Because you cannot have connection, intimacy, relationship with other people in the absence of risk. Now, I'm sure if you're like me, you can look at your life and say, there are many times I've been willing to step into a difficult conversation and it's actually increased our connection. It's actually increased our intimacy on the other side because we were both willing to, to work it out, to struggle in the messiness or the discomfort of it, to push through to have something on the other side. Now that's not to say that sometimes they don't go the other way. I've had that happen as well, where I've engaged a difficult conversation and the whole thing blew up. Like <laughs> that is also possible. And I've found that that is way less likely. The percentage of when that's happened is way smaller than the percentage of it increasing intimacy and connection. So the next time you find yourself hesitating, avoiding, putting on the back burner what you've perceived or imagined is going to be a difficult conversation. Remember this, the longer you wait, the more difficult it's gonna be. The difficulty usually ramps up with procrastination. So what might've been difficult in 24 hours is gonna be maybe horrible in three months. And all the time that's passed in between signals to the other person that whatever is happening or whatever's not working is actually fine. It's a way to give license to the very thing that needs to get addressed. The second thing is, how does your character get developed if you're not willing to take those kind of risks? How does other people's character get developed if you're not willing and they're not willing to be in the grist of it 
with you, with each other? How does our character get developed if we don't take risks, if we don't do things that are outside of our comfort zone? Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't get developed. We don't, those muscles don't get stronger if we don't work them out. It's just like anything else. Third, do you need your cowardice? Is it important to you? Is it something you want to foster? Something you want to hold on to? Is it something you want to grow and expand in your life? Or are you more interested in developing your courage, in your bravery getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Yeah, you're gonna make mistakes. I make mistakes. Sometimes it's ugly. And do you have the faith and the courage just to persevere, to work it out? It might not be one conversation. Maybe it's multiple conversations. Be willing to be generous with your communication and with your listening. And notice how quickly what used to be difficult, what used to seem impossible or really hard becomes a risk that you're willing to take because you know what's on the other side is way bigger and more beautiful and more important than whatever you've been resisting. So maybe as you're listening, a bunch of different conversations have popped into your mind. Conversations you haven't had, conversations you need to have, conversations you've been avoiding having. Pause, take a nice deep breath and write them down. Write down what are the conversations and who are they with so you can do some forensics for yourself so that you can check out how much of my resistance is completely imagined or hallucinated and how much of it is based on something that I've experienced, based on some other type of communication, but I've maybe blown it out of proportion. And then look at the relationship itself. Is the relationship worth the risk and what would care dictate to you if you've enjoyed this video if it's been resourceful for you please hit the like button make a comment if you have a question i'd love to be in dialogue and check out some of the other videos on the site